Wolf with Jen. I am back at the Tempe offices for SAP, and it's my first um, three-person podcast, and all of our equipment's working, so that's a good start. And I'm back to talk about um, the Autism at Work program. I've already dropped two pods talking about the Autism at Work program, and we've had a chance to speak with Jose Velasco, who leads that program. And then the last one was actually with Charles, the employee himself. And so today I'm with two people um, who are highly involved in the Autism at Work program here in Arizona. And I'd like to welcome Orlando Carabello and someone I know <laughs> every, all the time, Greg Bainham, my husband. Hello. So Hello. welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank Hello. You. Welcome to the pod. Thank you. Um, let's or let Orlando introduce himself first. So my name is Orlando Caraveo. I've um, been with SAP for about 12 and a half years, and I think what led me to being here was probably a conversation I had with my boss probably about four years ago. Uh, I was always coming to him and saying, looking for something to do new, something that was new. And he came in and asked me to come to his desk one day and said, uh, are you interested in doing something new? And I said, sure, as always. And little do I, did I know that I was going to be involved in working and uh, having and hiring employees on the autistic spectrum. And from there, it was a journey of learning. I'm sure. <laughs> Lots of learning. How to spell autism, what was it about. Oh, um, the basics. The basics, exactly. I was, I was in autism 101 class. So you don't really come from the background of having worked with people with disabilities? None whatsoever. Uh, this is something completely new to me. I come from a family of a lot of community service. Uh, my wife currently right now is, does a lot of community service. We do it with our kids. And it's to me, community service is about paying back to our community and helping those um, that potentially could have a job that potentially don't have one now. And if I can put a hand into that and make uh, a difference in this world, then here's my opportunity. Well, there needs to be a lot more people like you out there. I'm sure there are. We just haven't found them. I know. <laughs> I'm sure there are. And did you mention what type of department you're in or like the type of role you have at SAP? No. I'm a manager of retail application development. I support about 20 to 24 employees um, as well as uh, students. So we work with the students out of Arizona State University. Um, so it's very technical, a lot of development, a lot of software development, working with retailers uh, across the world at a global level. Um, can't go into specific details about what we do, but uh, <laughs> a technical environment, and I think it's, it's potentially uh, an area that uh, students or even future employees in the, on the autistic spectrum could really grow. Awesome. Gregory Bainham, yes, would you hello. like to introduce yourself? And please say your job title, because I have no idea what you do. <laughs> I don't think you've ever known what I do when I, when I go to the office. No, so my name is Greg. I am uh, Jen's husband. Um, I, lucky man. Lucky man, yes. Uh, so I work as the data lead for the testing efforts for the, the, the retail application that we work on. So my job is to make sure all the groups have the appropriate amount of data to test with. Um, that involves from some front-end work that we go through as well as going straight to the database. Um, and that's the, the role that Charles works with with me. Um, he was hired in to actually uh, learn and grow in that position. Um, I'll just touch on it that his skills when he first came in were primarily we were looking at a certain particular language. He has since completely evolved into working with, um, with entirely database scripts. So he is, we have upskilled him from a fairly uh, novice entry level Visual Basic developer to an actual database SQL programmer over the past couple of years that I've been working with him. And I give all the credit to Greg for doing that. He <laughs> has really transposed um, uh, Charles into a fantastic employee that people can depend on. Um, he has really grown into himself, and he is now becoming even much more uh, autonomous because of what Greg has done. I know Greg and I have had multiple conversations. We talk on a regular basis just to see what we can do to support Charles, and really it's, it's hands-off for me and hands-on for Greg. Yeah, it's, it, I'll be blunt. It's taken a very, uh, been a very big investment of my time to get him there, but it's it's really paid off in that he's. We're getting to a point now where I'm starting to step further and further away from the entire process and turning more and more of it over to Charles to simply run on his own. And it's uh, from the comparing that from the first day he walked in the office to where he is now, the the, the change in the growth has just been dramatic. Mm -hmm. 
And then we also have SARC available, so he has clinicians that can hear uh, twice a week. Now it's gotten to the point where even his growth has, has gotten to the point where they no longer go to his home. They're only here at the office, so they're allowing him to uh, be himself, but also guide with guidance with regards to communication and sending out emails, uh, managing his time, prioritizing his work. So I think it's been a, a full circle of support within the office and it's helped him to be uh, very successful. We are very lucky to have Sark in very, Arizona. Very, very supportive. So was this your first experience with the Autism at Work program? You know, looking back, I, I, I think it is. Um, I, I don't think I ever had an opportunity to come across anybody who had autism. I don't have family members, uh, whether it's nieces or nephews, brothers or sisters, cousins. Uh, it just didn't exist in my family. Uh, so yes, this is my first time. All the way around, yes. So uh, I was on a trip to Palo Alto with uh, my manager, and um, Jose, the head of the program, as we talked about, had reached out to him to say, uh, we're starting up this program. Do you have any interest in it? And then there was a very specific follow-up about headcount and budgets and things that uh, caught my manager's attention to the point where he said, yes, I want to have this meeting because the way things work here, if you get headcount and budget, it means you get to hire somebody. And so he was very interested in the opportunity to hire somebody. So uh, Jose happened to be in Palo Alto at the same time. Bernhardt said, oh, by the way, Greg, uh, I've got this autism thing that we're... Bernhardt's your boss. Bernhardt's my boss. Um, got this autism guy that wants to talk to me about potentially hiring somebody on the spectrum. Would you have any interest in sitting in the meeting? To which I, of course, said, absolutely, get me in there. Um, so we sat and talked to Jose for probably an hour. A lot of it was just understanding the program, but then there was the, this specific conversation about headcount and budgets that Bernhard got all excited about because he loves to <coughs> negotiate that sort of thing. And then once uh, Jose got up to leave, Bernhard basically turned to me and said, Greg, if, if there's something you want to do, it's all yours. Go, go do whatever you want. Run with it, uh, take it as far as you can. And that, of course, led to, we had on-site training that Jose came and did. I don't know if you're gonna talk about that too, Orlando. Um, and then uh, the hiring of, we had hired one person, what was her name? Samantha. Samantha, that was it. Yeah, she was, out of, she was a graduate of Cal Berkeley, had more of an artsy uh, approach or background. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out because she was in a, a car accident, hurt her back, and out of work for six months, and we needed a resource, and I was not able to, to de facto the position. Yeah, but that's what's led then to, we had enough experience from that one, and I've got to say Orlando poured himself into that relationship. That was, uh, that was a lot of his time on that case. But it led us to then say the very next opportunity we had, which was with Charles, um, we immediately jumped at it and said, yes, let's do it. Yeah. And and it's wonderful because this is supported by your supervisors from the top down, and you know it makes it an easy yes. Very much so. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, Bernhard I think has eight different people across his group that are on the spectrum. Yeah. So he's yay Bernhard. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is an he, advocate. Advo he's absolutely, absolutely an advocate for the, not only just the program, but he likes to get the uh, the diversity going across his entire unit. So given that there's so much support across the board. How do you see the program continuing to expand at SAP and you know, possibly some of the partners that you're affiliated with? I think part of it is education and visibility. Um, we, have, of those managers that are in this, um, managing a, 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 an employee on the spectrum, have an opportunity and I think actually a duty uh, to educate our peers. Uh, for example, we had recently, back about uh, a month ago, we actually had Jose on site who provided a presentation about Autism at Work program and mentioned that I was one of the first few managers at a global level at SAP to hire someone uh, on the autistic spectrum, which came as a surprise to me. And after the, the conversation was over and I walked out of the conference room, one of, the, one of my peers in, in the sales walked over and said, hey, I'd be interested, what do I need to do? Can you tell me a little bit about your experience? And I, so I think providing my personal experiences, I think the education from a standpoint of having somebody like uh, Jose, who's an expert in, in the field, uh, presenting to others, I think is just bringing um, uh, something that's just more limelight into a, a topic that not many people know about. Best kept secret. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And it should be pointed out that w these are not you know, menial jobs that people are being hired into. These are. You know, we have software developers. You hear that Charles is uh, working on data topics. These are 
uh, you know, we have developers, we have testers. Uh, they've expanded the list of, of roles from the last um, last few months to be as inclusive as possible. So there's it's a wide array of, array of array of skills that we are hiring from the spectrum. So what have been some of the challenges you know along the way? Because anytime something's done for the first time, it's not perfect, and there's a human element involved too. Is there anything that surprised you or that you know you hadn't anticipated? Yeah, I think it's a story that I, I tell often, and, and, and today it's, it's laughable over a cup of coffee. At the time, it was real world, and I walked away and said, okay, what am I going to do about this? So it was probably about the first week. Um, Charles was sitting at his desk. I wanted to have him feel welcomed. I wanted to make sure that he was fine. He had everything in place. And I walked up to him and said, hey, good morning. How was your weekend? And he kind of sat back in his chair, had this really... Uh, scared look on his face and looked at me and said, why are you asking me a personal question? He looked at his watch on work time. And <laughs> so then I, literal. Yeah, so <laughs> literal. And so I thought, what am I going to do? And to be honest with you, he caught me so off guard, I didn't have a response. And so I walked away and I thought, what am I going to do? And so I started reading. I spoke to my sister who works at the school districts in California, who works and has seen uh, uh, the autism at work, uh, or I should say autistic students at the elementary level, and I asked her, what, what, what are your thoughts? What, what can I do? And she said, just keep on doing what you're doing. And ultimately, we worked through this. Uh, he started coming to me. Uh, during breaks, we would have a cup of coffee, and now I feel like we're, we're good. We're, we're great. It, it's, there's a, a lot of trust between the two of us. He comes over and asks me how my weekend was, and this is two years later, so she gave some good advice. That's awesome. I mean, it's... It's such a lesson in learning because it's a behavior. It's not a trained skill, and you have to learn to adapt to accept people's behaviors as just as transparent as they are and know that there's no um, intent behind it. Sure. And I'm sure he is happy to share tons about his weekends <laughs> now. <laughs> he, he does, and it's interesting because, uh, you know, when you, when you come in, you come in with the most positive intent, and I walked away thinking, what did I do wrong? Uh, just saying good morning and, and it's a rough it. Monday. <laughs> it was a rough Monday for me, and uh, but you know I look back, I laugh at it now. At the time, it was it was an interesting situation for me, but now I think with these experiences I've had in the last two years, it really drives me to be really an advocate for others, um, my peers, uh, those in other offices, maybe in in other locations. I've talked about this, and I want to freely share my experiences, both uh, in, in areas of improvement for what I could do differently and areas where we can continue growing. So I feel like I'm an advocate within the office itself. Well, and it, overall, I mean, I think you're probably a better manager with everybody. You know, that, that's a good, uh, maybe an interesting topic. I found myself to be a better communicator, or I, I should say not a better communicator. I would say that I've improved in my communication. I have to be much more clear on my, on my uh, emails I send out. Um, I have to be much more direct in what I'm looking for, specifics, if something needs to be done, when, it is, when does it need to be done, how it needs to be done. It's much more explicit, uh, with much more detail because Charles is on the email. There are times when I take him off when maybe the email doesn't necessarily directly correlate to him, but in general it helps me with employees. Autism at work making SAP employees greater. It's working. Yeah. <laughs> in a roundabout way. And, we didn't even try. <laughs> so, Greg, tell me a little bit about how you kind of had to adapt in this more professional setting than, you know, as a parent when we're, we can yell at our daughter. <laughs> we can yell at her or we can take away the TV remote or something. <laughs> no together. iPad. We need, yes, no <laughs> iPad for you. Uh, I think the biggest example I have is, again, going back to communication style in that uh, if I take notes on how to go through the process of something, for me, it's just these very abstract, it's just a screenshot, it's maybe an arrow. This is the bare bones basics of what I need to remind myself of how to do a particular task, whatever it might be. And I, I wrote up one of these and I sent it to Charles when he first got here, and he had no idea what to do with it. He was like, you know, he basically came back and said, Greg, this thing's useless for me. Um, I need, you know, point one, point two, point three. And I realized that, you know, my kind of abstract way of thinking at things just does not work for him. Um, now, we've come to this kind of arrangement where I'll put together my sloppy version of a document, give him a couple days, and he'll come back with it 
you know, point by point of exactly what needs to be done. All of the screenshots are done. All of the, the descriptions are done. Really, really well documented. And it's worked out to benefit me because I get rid of my sloppy documents and I now have these, these very precise ones that, uh, that I can refer to as necessary. So it's actually worked out. It's helping me to improve because I realize I kind of, I go through things very quickly and slowing down and trying to get a little more detail out of them has, has actually been an improvement for me as well. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting for me when I've had some interesting one-on-one -on -one emails with with, uh, with Charles and sometimes like I'm a little bit long-winded in my emails, he'll ask all these questions and he'll respond in red and then he asks me to respond to my questions in red. So it highlights the answers to the questions that he's looking mm -hmm. for. So, interesting. Well, as a former auditor, <laughs> Documentation <laughs> is key because people should be able to pick up a manual or a document and know what to do with it and not have to go and ask. <laughs> I'm a stickler for that. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also consulting at a client right now where nothing's documented. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, like, I mean, you've given some, you've shared some personal growth stories, but like, I mean, what's the been the big plus for either of you? I think for me, is I'm I'm getting exactly what I've asked for. <laughs> Congratulations! You know, and what I mean by that is, I asked to to help the community, and so I'm doing com community service without even leaving the office. That to me is fantastic. Yeah, good mix. And and I would echo that in that, uh, I mean, having a daughter that's on the spectrum, I know that there are other people that are are looking out for her when I'm not there, and so I kind of feel the the responsibility of, I don't want to say looking out for Charles, but just n kind of giving back by um, helping out someone else on the spectrum that uh, I'm sure people do for my daughter every single day. Yeah, and, and some of the some of our peers or some of the employees in the office have family members that are on the spectrum, and I remember the, the one thing that they came back to me about um, that had a resounding effect was when they told me they found, when we started this Autism at Work program, they found that their child, whoever it was, um, had a future. Right. Whereas, whereas in the past, without the Autism at Work program, they had a child that potentially they were thinking, how are they ever going to work? And so I right. think SAP, this Autism at Work program, has given hope to those in our office. And I feel, and like you feel, Greg, a sense of responsibility, and yet I don't have that experience you know, that you have, but I feel a, a calling. I'll call it that. Oh, it gives me Very chills. Cool. Yeah. Well, and I mean, overall, I don't know if all the employees collectively know about this programming. Obviously, Charles has self-disclosed that he's part of this program. It's not a requirement. Yeah, it is um, not. But I assume, I mean, I know a lot of the people who work here. I assume he's very welcomed and appreciated and Absolutely. championed by everyone who's mm -hmm. here and is yeah. aware. Some of, some of our employees invite him to their apartments and their homes for game night. He is oh. one of, he's one of the team members. That's great. Mm -hmm. So much better than he was going to be, you know, at a checkout register at a at a grocery store. Sure, come a long way. This is a safe environment, especially since he relocated here. Right. Um, you know, to be in a professional, safe environment, and not you know, I, I'm not discounting that level of work at bagging groceries or doing checkout, but you're dealing with the general public then too, who might aren't trained might not be compassionate and you know I wouldn't want L in a public scenario. I'd like sure. to see her in a nice savvy office like this someday. And and the approach that we took to hire him I think went really well. I think we learned our from our first um, hire of the of individual that was on the spectrum. I think it went a little bit quicker for both parties, uh, myself as well as the, the candidate. Uh, and learning from that, we took a step back and, and when Jose told me he had a, another candidate to hire, uh, he said, what would you want? To, well, if you could do this all over again, what would you do? And I told him, I said, let's take a step back. Maybe what I can do is interview the person for about four months. I can provide some tasks to him and see how he develops the work. And everything just continued to work really well. The conversations we had uh, through video conferencing worked extremely well. He got a chance to get to know me better. Uh, it was an opportunity for me to get to know him. We saw each other face to face on a weekly basis. It got to the point where I started expanding that horizon with him uh, introducing them to other employees that were, uh, that would be eventually working with him. He got to get to know them. Uh, I think the whole process worked really well without even knowing what we were doing at the time. We just felt that this was the best approach and it worked really well. 
Now, if I were to do this again, I, I think it would follow the same approach. And correct me if I'm wrong, he was in Pennsylvania at the time, so we flew him out here at least twice? Once. It was only once. Once, once okay. to do a to home visit, and we paid for it. Yeah. Okay. Do you so know that he's created a guide on relocating? I, I did. Um, in fact, that was a suggestion of mine uh, when he first started, and we worked with his clinicians to actually write the blog so that he could actually send it out to his peers and potentially fewer future hires of what it would take to, to do uh, relocation, actually. I think anyone needs that guide. <laughs> Relocating is rough. Yeah, and things to consider. You know, the, the one thing he mentioned in his blog was about uh, gaining friendships. Yeah. It was, it's been tough, um, but I think he's overcome that two years later. So I kind of wanted to ask a little bit more about SARC um, because they're, they are so amazing here. And they have an, uh, a, I can't remember the name of the program, like an employee at work program um, where they're really working and coaching with adults on the spectrum to have gainful employment. And, you know, obviously we're just talking about one individual here, but, you know, you mentioned they come into the office, they used to go at the home. I mean, are they give, do you think that they're giving you as a company everything you need as opposed to, you know, just what they're doing for Charles? Well, I would, I would say they are in that they are they're helping to, I'll say, upskill Charles in, in social interactions is the big thing that they're working on with him. Um, what's been in, what I've enjoyed seeing there is that um, they're actually starting, it used to be they would only sit in an office together, and you can, we're getting enough conversation with them now that they're actually starting to move out of that office, and the goal now is for them to be sitting in meetings with Charles to observe him as he is interacting with everybody else. What that signals to me is he's grown enough in just his own personal comfort and, and uh, skills, I'll say, that now they're going to try pivoting a little bit into um, observing him interact with his coworkers. And it's kind of a nice transition to see happening because uh, they have given him the skills that he needed to get that kind of the base of what he needs and now he's going for more more complicated topics. It's not but overnight. It's not overnight and it, it should be pointed out he's paying for that himself so that's actually I think there's I don't know if there's insurance I don't Yeah there's detail. a benefit there's a portion of his benefits that cover the, the, the cost and then the other side of it is you know, out of pocket. Yeah, because that's something I think other employers would ask. What is my cost yeah. to have roll out a program like this? I mean, obviously, there's been cost spent to build the group that Jose has built, and he invests a lot in training and education. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can just tell that the level of investment has been huge on both of your parts with the time mm -hmm. that you've spent. I, I don't know if there's other levels of investment that well, you can a, yeah. you share just so that you know, anyone else who's considering launching a program like this, you know, can know and, what to expect. Yeah, and certainly there are, uh, there are financial costs that go along with it. I mean, Jose is a salaried employee. He travels around, so he has, there are costs that go along with that. Um, but there are also rewards that are coming through, and Jose was talking about some of the, uh, the benefits to SAP, and it, a lot of it is just in the brand that we, we, we value the brand by having programs like this. And so it comes back to pay us because there are, uh, the more publicity we get from this, the more people uh, can associate SAP with doing programs that are of benefit to the community overall. So what would you tell senior management level people at a large company about why they should hire people on the spectrum? I think from, from, for one thing that I can think of right offhand is if you can find the right skill sets that fit the individual, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great match. Uh, in particular with Charles, um, we found that data topics are absolutely something that work with him and he works with it well. It has expanded his horizons in working with employees um, and peers, he's gained friendship. Um, one of the things that we have to consider the fact that he's always here. He's never out, he's always on time. Um, it's like clockwork and he's very dependable um, when you ask for something to get done, it gets done, and it gets time done done in a, in a fashion that you need it uh, with the expectation set. Now, granted, there's going to be some support along the way, but we do that with any other employee. Right. Nothing really changes. I think I would, uh, I would make them realize that there's an untapped uh, market of, of candidates that are out there. Right. That are, I mean, they're one of the most underemployed uh, groups in society because, quite frankly, they, there's a struggle to get through the interview. And the thing that upper management needs to know is the interviewees 
uh, sorry, the interviewer needs to be trained in what to expect if they are going to interview somebody that's on the spectrum. Because once you can get past that, you can actually recognize somebody for the skills that they have and not see the, you know, the kind of the, the hard interviews that, that uh, people on the spectrum can go through. Uh, one of the other employees that's in uh, Pennsylvania, um, it was on uh, CBS News, and he talked about how he couldn't, he could never get past the first interview because everybody thought there was, he was just this very mean, bitter person because he didn't know the social skills of looking people in the eye and, and expanding on questions. He would give these one word answers to things because he thought that's what they were looking for, and nobody wanted to hire him. And it wasn't until he got to SAP where the interviewers had been trained on what to expect with interviewing him that they hired him, and now he's this super high performer uh, working on, on one of the teams. I forget which one it is, but... Um, is he the same employee that did the, the conversation or did the presentation at the United Nations? I believe that was him, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So the, the thing that to educate other companies and, and senior management is they have to, be make, have to be willing to make the investment to educate their teams as they are today of what to expect when somebody on the spectrum is joining their team. And certainly we did that. Jose came and gave an, uh, a training two-hour yeah. presentation to the entire development team to just prepare us and just set some expectations on what it means to have somebody on the spectrum. Well, and think about what it does for their company image. I mean, this is a trickle-down effect because you guys enjoy this. It's filling a passion. You're creating opportunities for someone who was underemployed, who has more money in their paycheck, that goes to pay more in taxes, that goes into the economy with some spend, has a more enriched life, both now obviously personally as well as professionally, and parents and caregivers aren't, you know, I don't want to say burdened, but I mean, not having to raise an adult child for the, you know, the rest of their lives because he has independence. Sure, true. So, I mean, these types of programs have a much bigger outreach than just, you know, the direct report to direct manager That's relationship. Yeah. Well, I want to thank both of you for being on the pod. Um, I'm always honored when people carve out their personal time because we're recording after five o'clock on a Friday night. <laughs> um, and to share your experiences and stories and, and help me build this pod and share information out there. And I got to say it, like I'm obviously biased, but SAP is obviously a true leader in supporting the autism community. And I think everyone should be licensing their software because of that. <laughs> so that's my plug. Well done. <laughs> so thank, thank you guys right, so thank much you. for coming. Thank Absolutely. you. Happy to do it. All right, friends. Whoop, whoop. Hope you guys have a great weekend if you're listening to this on a Friday, like we're recording it. And thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.